Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how we can create chat application using Signaler in place of WebAssembly applications. For that, we are going to need HP.NET Core hosted version of Blazor WebAssembly application in which client is hosted on the browser and the server is hosted on a machine and clients are connected to the server so that client can receive and send data to the server. And we are going to use this architecture to create Signaler Hub on the server and a Signaler Hub connection on the client. Now this hub connection is connected to this Signaler Hub so that it could send the message to the hub. And this hub can send message to different clients because the clients are listening to this hub. Now we are going to follow this architecture and this hub connection and signal or hub architecture in order to create a chat application. But before that, I've given myself a head start and designed UI to create a chat box so that we could send and receive messages. So let's first take a look at the code that I've already written and then we'll add this architecture to send and receive messages so that we could create chat application. Let's take a look at the code that I've already written. For that, I'm gonna log in with John Smith's user ID and password, and then go to contacts page. And I'm gonna select one of these contacts. Let's select Gary Thomas. When I click on Gary Thomas, then Gary Thomas' first name and last name gets loaded on top of the page. Then we have a message box, which is going to help us show the messages which are getting sent and received. And then we have a text box and a button on click of which we are going to send the message which we are typing in this text box. Let's take a look at the code. For that, I'm going to go to my chat.user component. On top of the page, I'm showing the user that we would like to talk to his first name and last name. So if you take a look at the URL, you can see the user ID of the user that we would like to talk to. And I'm passing that as a route parameter. And I'm passing that to an API on on initialize to get the user. If you look at this is a user, I'm loading the whole user and then I'm showing their first name and last name on top of the page here. So we are receiving the route parameter and then loading that user's information on top of the page. Then I have a for each loop which is looping through a list of messages. I created a class, which is message. So if I go to its definition, I've created this class in shared project, which is holding to user ID from user ID and message text. And we are going to use object of this class to send and receive messages on our chat application. And I'm populating those messages in a for loop in this box here. So if I'm sending the message, then that message will get populated on the right hand side. And if I'm receiving the message, then that will get populated on the left hand side so that our chat application looks nicer. Then we have a text box and a button. This text box is mapped to a property, which is message text. And then this button is mapped to a function which is going to get called whenever we click on that button and that function is empty right now we are going to make some code changes so that we could send and receive messages and that's what we're going to do it in the next section to get started with integrating signal R in our blazing chat application i'm going to follow this article which is posted by Microsoft.com. It's about using SP.NET Core Signal R in Blazor. And as an example, they have used chat application. So that works out pretty good for us. To get started with the article, they're first asking us to install a few things like Visual Studio, .NET, C Sharp extension, and also create a hosted version of Blazor WebAssembly application. We have already done that for Blazing chat application. In the next step, they're asking us to install a client library, 
signal our client library in the client project. So let's copy this command and install that package. I'm going to stop the server project and install that package in the client project. So in the client project, we are going to install this Microsoft ASP.NET Core signal our client package in our client project. So if I open this, project file you can see that we do not have signal or package i'm going to install that and that package will get added in my client project now the next line is to add a signal or hub so in our slides we looked at we need to create a signal or hub on the server side and that's what they're asking us to do they're asking us to create a signal or hub on the server project so for that i'm going to first create a folder in my server project i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it as hubs and in hubs i'm going to create a new class which is going to be chat hub and in that chat hub we will add a class which is going to inherit from hub which is coming from microsoft asp.net course signal r package so i'm gonna copy this class and paste it here and I'm going to change few things here to make it work with my application. I'm going to change the namespace to blazing chat. And then we have a class which is inheriting from this hub, which is coming from Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR hub. Now, this class has only one method, which is send message, which is taking two parameters, user and message and it's using clients which is coming from this hub so we're inheriting this class and we're using one of the properties from this class which is clients and we're using all property and then we are calling this send async that means we are sending the message to all of our clients now whenever we would like to send a message we are going to call this method and the message which is going to get sent is going to hold user and the message and our client should be listening to this receive message in order to receive that message so that's what's happening here we're sending the message but we are also telling our clients to keep on listening to this receive message in order to receive the messages which are sent from different clients now here i'm going to make few changes instead of using these two parameters I'm going to use message, which is the class that I created. I created a class so that I could send messages between my clients. And this message is in shared project. So I'm going to add that namespace in my chat hub. And instead of sending user and message, I'm going to send the object, which is holding. So if I go to its definition, it's holding to user ID from user ID and the message text. So this is all we need to send the message. And that's what I'm doing here. So instead of passing user and message text, I'm going to send the message object, which would be sent from the client. Now we are done with creating this hub. We'll have to tell our server project to create an endpoint for this. For that, we'll have to add signalr as one of the services first we'll have to add a namespace so that we could use that chat hub class that you created so for that i'm going to go to my startup project here startup class and then i'm going to add a namespace which is going to be blazing chat server hubs that's where the chat hub class is located at and then I'm going to add a service in my configure services, which is going to be for SignalR. So I'm going to add that as one of the services in my server project startup class. Then I'm going to also tell what they should be compressing. So we'll be compressing our messages. We don't want to send plain messages. We would like to compress those messages. So I'm going to add that as options i'm going to tell we would like to add response compression service in our server project and we would like to compress this type of messages the mime type of the message is this 
Now the next step is to add this line in configure method. So we have two methods. One is configure services and another is configure. In configure, I would like to tell my app to use the response compression. So we added this option. We would like to use that when we send the messages. And the last step is to add the endpoint. So we added this chat hub class. We would like to also map that hub as one of the endpoints and mention the URL so that our clients can connect to this hub. So I'm going to copy that line and add that as one of the endpoints. And that's all we need to do on the server side. On the server side, that's all we need to do in order to create a SignalR hub. Now on the client side, we'll have to add some UI changes. So here they have given us a Razor component, the whole Razor component that we can add. But here I'm going to pick up a few things that I can use in my chat.razor component in order to make it work for my application. So for that, I'm going to go to my chat.razor component here. And here I'm going to add few things. First thing that I'm going to add is the property. I'm going to add this private hub connection property. And this class will be coming from the package that we added. So I'm going to add that line here. It's going to throw an error because we do not have that namespace here. Now I'm going to add that namespace. I'm going to hit control dot and it's going to add that using statement, which is ASP.NET or signal our client, the package that we added on the client side. Now the next step is to build that hub connection. So I'm going to copy this line on uninitialized. I'm going to paste this line. This line is where we are building that hub connection. We are telling it to connect to the endpoint. So the endpoint that we created, which is chat hub for chat hub class that we created, we would like to build a hub connection from that endpoint. And the next line is where we are listening to the messages. So this hub connection will be listening to the messages, which will be receive message. So in our chat hub, we said whenever we send the message, we want our clients to receive messages. They should be listening to this receive message. And that's what's happening here. We are telling our hub connection to keep on listening to this receive message so that we can receive that message. Now we are sending message here, message object. We are not sending string and string, which was the previous case. We are sending a message. So I'm going to remove this and pass message here. And it also takes a function as a parameter, which is going to handle the message that we are receiving. So I'm going to remove this and it's going to catch the message in message object. Now we don't want to encode that. And this message that we are receiving, I would like to add that in the list of messages that we have created. So this list of messages in which we are showing the messages which are coming from the current user and the to user. So the box that we created here, this box, that's where I'm adding the messages that I'm receiving. So I'm going to copy this list of messages and add the message, which is coming from different clients and paste it in this message list. And I'm calling state has changed so that every time we receive a message, we would like to re-render our component so that we can see the message. And the next line is to start that connection. So I'm going to copy this line and paste it here. We built the connection. We also told our connection what it should be listening to. And we would like to start that connection. So this is the receive part. We would also like to send the message. So whenever I click on this button, I would like to send this message text, whatever input text is, I would like to send it to the server. So here we created signal our hub. 
we also created hub connection and we also told our hub connection to keep on listening to this chat hub but on click of send we would like to send a message to the server for that i'm gonna go to my send method here and i'm gonna create a new instance of message which is going to have two user id which will be the two user id that we are getting as route parameter and this message will have from user id which we are getting from our current user we're getting that from current user and then we'll also have the message text so i'm going to get that message text which we are going to get it from the text box which is on our ui here so this text box i'm gonna grab this property and assign that to my message message text property now we would like to send this message to our signal r hub the signal r hub for that i'm going to use hub connection i'm going to say hub connection and send async now here it's taking the method name so if you go back to your chat hub it's taking this method name so i'm going to copy the send message and then pass it as parameter which is a string parameter and then it will take object argument which is going to be the message so i'm going to pass that message to the hub so when you send this message that will be received at the hub and that hub will send that message to all of our clients i'm, I'm going to fix this in the next episode to just send it to particular user not all of the clients that that's something that we're going to fix it in the next episode now if i go back to my chat.razor here i'm going to await this hub connection send async method so whenever we send the message that will be received here that will send that message to all of our clients which are listening to receive message which we configured on on initialized here okay and that's all we need to do in order to integrate signal r as chat application in blazing chat application let's run this and see if that works or not so i'm gonna do dot net run i'm gonna go to my server project first and then do dot net run now i'm going to refresh my page here and then send the message hello world and when i click on send that message gets sent to julius caesar that's actually getting sent to everyone let's open this in a new browser i'm gonna open this in firefox and i'm gonna log in with julius caesar here and then go to contacts and let's keep this side by side so that we could take a look at it properly i'm gonna keep this in the center now i'm gonna try and talk to john smith so julius caesar is logged in here john smith is logged in here and i'm gonna say how are you doing and click on send and you can see that julius caesar is receiving that message i can send hello world and from here i can send how you doing and that is getting received at the at the other end so this is how you can integrate signal r and create a chat application in laser web assembly application and like i said this message is getting sent to everyone so even if i'm not talking to julius caesar and sending this message this message will be sent to other users too and that's something that we're going to fix it in the next episode if you have any questions you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook or you can ask those questions in the comment section below thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye